Hey everyone, my name is Riley and in this video we are going to be comparing Zoho CRM to HubSpot. Now these are two of the most powerful and most popular CRMs on the market but in this video we're going to take a look at the similarities, the differences, the pricing and overall which is going to be the best choice for you and your business. I want to preface this video by saying that there's not an inherent one is better than the other. It really depends on what you are using the tool for, the size of your business and a few other factors that come into this. Also, you can get a free trial to both HubSpot and Zoho CRM if you want to try them out for yourself using the links down in the description. All you have to do is click on that link, sign up for your account and you will be able to get a free account slash trial with both HubSpot and Zoho. The first section of this video is going to cover the ease of use and overall the user interface when using both of these tools. Now in this section, HubSpot is hands down the winner in terms of just the user interface, the way that this looks and just how much more modern this is than Zoho. But what I would say is honestly, once you learn how to use one of these platforms, you could very easily switch to the other platforms and be able to navigate 90% of the other platform pretty much instantly. For example, to see all of your contacts, all you have to do is head over to the contact section on each of these platforms and all of the contacts that you have within the CRM are shown right here. You can click into each individual contact to see more information about the contact that you clicked. HubSpot once again has a much cleaner layout for this, showing all of the basic contact information here on the left hand side. The middle is reserved for some of the more important main information that you would need to know, such as the companies they are connected to, any deals that are associated with this contact, any subscriptions that this contact has, along with some other data. We can also toggle over to this activity section and this is going to show a chronological timeline of all of the contact that you have made with this specific lead. So whether you have sent an email, whether you have called the contact, made any notes, updated the lifecycle stage, all of that information is going to be shown in this middle section. And then on this right hand side, we have pretty much the same data that we have here in the middle on this overview section. So what I personally do is I just keep this middle section toggled over to the activities tab and I find that to be the most effective way of viewing this HubSpot dashboard. On Zoho, we can see more or less the same data. However, it is laid out slightly differently and definitely isn't as easy to read at a glance. If we scroll down, once again, we can see the basic contact information, any notes added to the contact, any deals, open activity, any meetings, and all of the information that you would expect to access with a CRM. We can also toggle over to this timeline view, which is very similar to the activities tab on HubSpot, once again listing a chronological list of all of the contact made to this specific lead. Now, if you are working B2B and dealing with companies rather than individual contacts, you can access the companies tab on HubSpot. And this is essentially the way that it works is the exact same way as the contact section that we just talked about. However, listed here are going to be companies rather than individual contacts. If we click into a specific company, we can see all of the information that we need to about this company, as well as all of the individual contacts that are linked to the company. Of course, all of these contacts that are related to this company, they are also going to be shown up in the contacts tab that we talked about earlier. With Zoho, we can do the exact same thing. However, instead of being called companies, this tab is called accounts. Once again, we can click into any company in this account section, see all of the information and contact that we have had with this company, as well as any individual contacts that are affiliated or work for that company. We also have this deal section, which is pretty similar on both. And this is effectively like a Kanban layout of your current deal pipeline. So by default, these top sections are called qualification, needs analysis, value proposition. And we have all of these here that are assigned by default. We absolutely can change the name of these deal stages. And the way that we do this is by going into the setup area right here, then going into customization, modules and fields. Then in here, we can go down to deals, click on these three dots and then go to stage probability mapping. In here, we can then change the stage name. So for example, we could leave this as qualification. Then we could say this is like a discovery call. Then maybe we have like a sales call. I'll just make this super simple and leave it as these three stages right here. And then of course we have closed one, closed loft, and I'll delete this stage as well. So we can then save this right here. And if I now go back over to deals, 
All of this is going to be updated. So we now have the discovery call, sales call, and all of these added in. So the way that we do this is definitely less intuitive and more complex than what is over on HubSpot. I will show you that in a second. But overall, you can see me there going into the backend settings of HubSpot CRM to change a simple feature like this. That's a really good summary of overall HubSpot CRM, just being less intuitive and a little bit more difficult to use. In my opinion, there's just no reason that this shouldn't be added in here. Like we can just double tap and click into this section or even in this settings icon right here, we should be able to go in and change this in here. However, that's just not possible. And then as these prospects go through this sales pipeline, all we have to do is drag these along to the next section. So we can see this is now in a discovery call, then the sales call, so on and so forth. If we want to add new deals to this, all we have to do is create a deal right here. We can then choose the account name or company that this deal is with. So for example, I can select this furniture store. Let's once again call this marketing services. So this is like £6,000. And then we can add them in right here. We also do need to choose a close date. So let me just add that in. And then right here, we can see this has now been added to this deal pipeline. And then we can move it along, hopefully move it into the closed one area. And that is how you can use this area. This is the HubSpot deal pipeline right here. We can see these are the original ones that they give, needs assessment, solution proposal, and it's a lot easier to change these. So all we have to do is go over to board options on this right hand side, then go down to edit stages. And in here we can make those same changes to either delete or add in different stage names. So I just went through and added these deal stages in the same way, and then we can click on save. And just like that, these have now been updated. So this does work in a similar way where we can just move things along. We can move this into closed one, closed lost. Of course, the entire deal pipeline is going to be shown up here at the top. Just some information about this. We can see the total deal amount in the current pipeline right now, the weighted deal amount. So how much each deal is worth, how many deals are currently open, how much we have closed. So if I move this into closed one, that's going to update right there. We have the new deal amount and the average deal age. I also want to show you this section and this is personally one of my favorite aspects of HubSpot that Zoho doesn't allow you to do. Now this is only really going to be relevant if you are running a sales team specifically, but what we can do is go up to sales right here and then access the coaching playlist and playbooks function. So the coaching playlist is essentially going to allow you to view all of the different sales calls that you and your team have had on HubSpot and then put them into different playlists so that when you bring on board new hires, you can say, hey, go and listen to this specific playlist and they can learn a lot from listening to successful sales calls. HubSpot also has this function right here, the playbooks function, and this is going to allow you to create call scripts that your sales team can read on calls. So this is a basic one right here. This is a discovery call script and it's here by default. So right here, we just have some information before the call, you should do all of this. And then here are some key questions to ask on your discovery call. So you can add these questions in right there. And what I will do is actually go ahead and create one in front of you. So let's start from scratch. And then in here, we can say like, we can start the script. So we can say, hey, is this James? Hey James, this is X from blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. You can type out the sales script right here. And then what we can also do is go up to insert. We can insert different questions. For example, we can say like, let's just use this one. What are your company's goals? And then we can choose if this is required or not, then click on save. And just like that, this is now going to be added in. So that's a very cool feature that you can get on HubSpot as well. And then something else that we can do on HubSpot that we definitely cannot do on Zoho CRM is we can access this marketing suite. Now this is pretty expensive. I will get into all of the pricing later in the video, but this is essentially going to allow you to track all of your ads and essentially run your ads from inside of HubSpot. So if we go over to the demo area right here, I'll show you with this demo data, we can essentially go through and start creating and monitoring our ads inside of HubSpot. Now this is going to be especially effective if you are running these Facebook ad campaigns or whatever kind of ad campaigns you are running and then funneling these leads into HubSpot where you are going to use the pipeline in here on those specific leads. 
So as I say, you can create all of your ads inside of here. We can then go publish. And then in here, we can turn the ads on and off. We can see the impressions, the clicks, the total contact. All of the information that we need is here inside of HubSpot. So if you are running ads and that's what you are going to be using HubSpot for is using these ads to funnel them into this CRM, then this is a fantastic tool that you can use. As well as this, you can also create landing pages inside of HubSpot so that you can send them directly there, once again, potentially from these ads. However, let's now get into the pricing and I will show you just how expensive these features are on HubSpot. With Zoho, we have these different plans right here. We have the cheapest plan, the standard, starting off at £12 per month per user, moving up to £18 per month per user, 35 and then 42 Once again, the plan that you go for is really going to depend on the size of your company and exactly what you are going to be using this for. So what I would recommend is checking out the sales pages on both of these so that you can go through and make sure that you are getting the specific functions and features that you need. And with HubSpot, we essentially have two ways of going about this. We have this section for individuals and small teams. We have the starter plan starting out at £14 per month per seat. However, what I will say is this is super basic. And with this, to get like call transcription and coaching, sequences, coaching playlists, you do need to have this professional plan, which is a lot more expensive than Zoho, coming in at £77 per month per seat. If you are a bigger business or an enterprise, we can see these are the pricing plans right here. We of course have the professional, which is the same as the individual and small team. However, for bigger companies, this is going to be £135 per month per seat. But once again, this isn't something you have to upgrade to unless you need these specific features. For the marketing hub, which I showed you earlier, this is very, very expensive, especially for the businesses and enterprise area. This starts out at £702 per month, so definitely not accessible for everybody. And then the enterprise is £3,000 per month. Moving over to the individual, this is a lot better in terms of pricing. Uh, so with this, you get your email marketing, you get your landing pages, and this is only £14 per month per seat. And then for your social media, your custom reporting, all of the social media and ad stuff that I showed you, this is once again £702 per month. So overall, I would personally say that HubSpot is objectively the better platform. However, it really does depend on what you are using this for, and if that higher price is going to be worth it for you with HubSpot. Zoho does have 80% of the features that HubSpot do at a lower price. So for some people, Zoho is definitely going to be the better option. But for others, HubSpot is going to be the clear winner. So that is my comparison of HubSpot versus Zoho. Once again, if you want to claim a free trial to either of these software, you can do so using the link in the description. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.